Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be working on an Easter banner and I'm super excited. I'm gonna do a double layer Easter banner today and the top layer is going to be these cute little Easter eggs and then the bottom layer is going to be this felt um, banner. And this is an actual pre-made banner. I will show you where I got everything. I got everything on a really good deal and they all came together really flawlessly. So I'm super excited to see the final product of this little Easter sign. So we are going to be using the Cricut Joy today and we're also going to be using the Cricut um, Mini Easy Press. So I guess you could say everything is going to be really mini today. So we're going to see how two really small devices can bring together a really pretty banner and I'm super, super pumped to get this started. So what you're going to need are, you are going to need some of these wooden Easter eggs and they come as just bare wood. I did get them from the dollar store. So, um, and I believe it was the Dollar Tree. So they are are this little create your own ornament and so they are actual individual ornaments but I am actually going to string them together to make a banner so you can do as you wish but I thought it would be a very good banner idea so we're gonna do we're gonna use those we're also going to use this felt banner for the bottom layer and the bottom one I found at Target in their little dollar stop and I believe it was three dollars and it comes with a lot I believe let's see two four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 18 um, little slots. So the possibilities for creating anything you want are endless on there because there's little 18 little banner pieces on there. So I'm gonna use those. And then the other things you're going to need are a heat source. I'm gonna use the Cricut Mini Easy Press. You could also use the Easy Press or a household iron. I personally haven't had very much success with the household iron, but if that works for you, then go for it. Um, we're gonna use the Cricut Joy. You can use any cutting machine for this. Um, we're also gonna be using some Mod Podge and a little foam brush, our true control knife, a weeding tool, scissors, scraping tool. Um, we're gonna measure our project before we get started with the uh, measuring tape and then we're also going to be working with both HTV and adhesive vinyl today so the HTV I'm using is the Caesar easy weed HTV and then the vinyl I'm using is the Oracle 651 vinyl and then also we are going to be working with some patterned paper and then we're also going to be utilizing the new um, mat for the Cricut Joy so the mat allows you to put any materials other than smart materials through your machine, which is really exciting because when the machine came out, I wanted to make sure that all of the materials I'd already invested in would still go through the machine. So most do, um, minus like print and cut and a couple others. So make sure you go online to look at all of the materials that it can cut, but the mat is awesome because it allows you to put regular sized um, vinyl when you cut it down and regular size HTV it lets you put it through the machine. If you're wondering where the paper's from, um, just in case I get questions, the um, polka dot, oh sorry, the polka dot and then the, the pretty plaid gingham, um, they're from this really pretty paper pack. It's from the paper studio. It was $9.99 but I think I got it on sale. Um, it's called the Baby Girl Collection pack. So that's where those two came from. And then the really pretty teal color came from this Martha Stewart paper pad. And you guys know I love this paper pad. I even went and bought it twice because it's gorgeous. And there are so many beautiful pa uh, pattern papers in there. So I'm going to be using a lot of this. Okay. I think we have all the materials that we're going to be using. So before we run into Cricut Design Space to get our letters all designed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I created um, the paper on the little eggs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to use a little foam brush. I will link these because they are the perfect size. I came in like a pack of I can't even remember, but a ton. So I'll link these because they're awesome. They're just small enough to where once you're done with them, you can throw them away because there's um, they just came in like such a big multi-pack or if you want you can definitely clean them kind of depending on your mood that day right so i'm just going to put a little bit of mod podge on here um and then just brush it on okay and just get a good amount on there and i did my other ones last night um so i just 
checked them and cut them this morning and they look really good. So I'll show you. I wanted to do um, a few beforehand just so that you guys didn't have to watch me do five of them. Um, that way I can speed this up a little bit for you. Okay. Making sure I got all the edges. So that looks great. So now what I'm going to do is it's going to go down on this little teal piece. So I'm just going to turn this over and it's a double sided pattern paper. That's why you can see a little design on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down glue facing down and I'm just going to press and I'm actually going to press it on um, really, really flat surface. And then what I did was I flipped it over real quick. And I did a little scraping job with my scraper tool just to make sure the glue really got everywhere. And then, to be completely honest, what I did was I took my keyboard and I placed this upside down and I just placed my keyboard right on top of it. And I let it dry that way. That way it just kind of dries with everything really really flat and a little bit of pressure so we're going to let that dry and now we are going to measure really quick our um, banner that way we know how to size our letters that are going to go on there so i'm going to be doing the htv on the felt and that's how we're going to use the mini easy press and then i'm going to put the vinyl on the paper flowers and the reason i'm doing that is because like you just saw i put glue on here and so i don't want to put HTV on here um, and heat up that glue because it can reactivate or ruin the glue that just um, dried and everything is all nice and perfect and straight and so I don't want to ruin that by um, putting a heat, heat source on there. So I'm going to be using vinyl. That's why I'm going to be using two different things today just in case you're wondering. Okay, so let's grab our measuring tape and we're going to measure the length here. Um, so I am going to say that I don't want my letters any larger than two and a quarter. So that's just about right here. And for the eggs, I'm going to make them all cohesive. So I'm going to say two and a quarter for the eggs as well. Okay, so let's hop into design space and we will get um, all of the letters, the Happy Easter spelled out and I will show you how you can arrange them so that they will um, cut perfectly on the Cricut Joy mat and then we'll get to cutting, pressing and bringing this whole Cricut um, Easter banner together. Let's get started. Okay, so design space is opened up and now what we're gonna do is we are just gonna create a text box. box. And so I'm gonna create a text box for each line. So Happy will be on one line and then I'll create a new text box for um, Easter. So what I'm going to do is just type in happy. Okay, oops, happy. And then I'm going to strike this up here. The font that I'm going to be using today is called Don Juan, um, and I believe it's a Cricut Access access font so um, it's already on there but just so you can see it's spelled um, without a space in between so it's this one right here okay so I'm going to do that and then I don't need multi-layer or anything so I'm just gonna delete this little gray version of it okay so I'm left with this and now I'm going to create another text box and say Easter okay so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to size these so I'm going to go ahead and just go up here to height and I'm going to type in 2.25 and then it sizes my length at two and a quarter right here so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the same for the Easter going up to height and I'm going to type in 2.25 and voila everything is already ready to go so now one thing I'm going to do is I am going to color these a different color. Now, you guys know they're both going to be cut on, out on white vinyl, but just so that I can visually see there's a difference and so that the Cricut knows that I'm going to be putting two different materials in, I'm going to color these separately. So I am going to color um, the Happy, I'll just color that white, and then the Easter is going to be a teal color, and it's, again, just to help me remember that I need to put um, a different material in. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and show you two different ways you can do it. You can go in and hit make it just like this. 
And for this one, we are going to be using on the mat. And again, it reminds us for the Cricut Joy, if you use on the mat, it's for any material. So go ahead and hit done. So now what this is doing is it's showing you if you keep those um, letters all together, you are gonna need their um, 12 inch mat. So the Cricut Joy comes with the, um, is it six and a half inches? It's the smaller one. So I am going to um, ungroup these letters for a couple reasons. Um, I'm also going to ungroup them so that I can kind of drag them out a little bit so that I have enough room, especially for the HTV layer to cut between and apply um, individually. So I'm going to go ahead. If you guys have the longer mat, go ahead and do this. That's perfect. But for those of you who are just beginning with your Cricut Joy and you haven't invested in more materials and you want to just use what came through the box, then let's do this. And this is how I'm going to do it because again, I'm just, I have my small mat as well. So I'm just going to hit ungroup and I'm going to go ahead and click this one and I'm going to hit ungroup and then I am going to show you that all of the letters are now individually on there. Okay. So now the joy is selected. We're going to go up here and we're going to click make it. And now the letters, not only we're going to hit on the mat again. Um, and then all the letters, are going to be fitting on that smaller mat. And then you also can drag them around so that you have, you know, a little bit more space to work with. And this especially is going to be important for the iron on layer to have a little bit more space in between because you're going to be wanting to have a little bit of carrier sheet around your design um, to cut out and place down on your um, mat or, or your project to um, iron on. So now remember our um, happy is going to be in vinyl. So we are all perfect. It's on the mat. The material is perfect and we don't need to do mirror on. So for the second one, we are going to do on the mat. We are going to spread these apart just a little bit. And then we are going to select, let me get these all perfect here. Um, now we're going to select mirror for this one. And this is because for the Easter, the Easter um, word or letters are going to go on that felt, which are going to be um, with HTV or iron on. And whenever you're working with HTV or iron on, you're going to want to mirror your image. Always double check with the um, brand of HTV that you're using, but most likely than not, it's going to um, want you to mirror your image when cutting. Okay, so we are all set. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the first one because it's going to print first and cut first. So let's go ahead and before we switch off this camera, I'm going to open up um, the heat guide. And what I'm going to do, let me restart this for us. This is just a Cricut.com heat guide and it helps you know how to um, do your settings for your Easy Press or your Easy Press Mini. So what you're gonna do is for me, we are using the Cricut Easy Press Mini. The um, iron-on we're using, I'm gonna do the everyday iron-on selection because it's the closest for the um, Caesar Easy Weed in my opinion. And then the base material is going to be felt. And then once you do that, you can hit apply and it's going to tell you everything that you need, which is awesome. It's going to tell you that you're going to obviously need your mini easy press. It's going to tell you you need the easy press mat, which I need to grab your iron on um, designs. So it's going to also tell us to preheat our material and it'll tell us up here the settings wants to be on low for 60 seconds with constant movement and light pressure. Then it also directs us how it's gonna peel, which will be a warm peel. So I love the heat guide. It really, really helps me just remember what I need to be doing um, and how long to do it. Just helps my project stay successful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get everything cut out and we will start getting this banner put together. Okay, so the first material we're gonna load is going to be our adhesive vinyl. So I am just going to place that on my standard grip mat. And again, this little green mat does come with the Cricut Joy. So it's nice that they get you at least started. Um, this project is gonna be awesome for any type of scrap material that you have. So if you do have any, um, definitely, definitely um, keep the um, scraps because it will come in handy, especially with the joy. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure that all of this vinyl is scraped down nice on my mat and we will get it loaded. So just opening up the mat. Did you guys see my tutorial yesterday? I um, got this all decorated. She's so cute. It was really fun. And now my girls, they loved it before because I think kids just gravitate 
gravitate towards anything that's super small. But then once they saw the flowers, my girls are just like really, really excited about this little, um, this little guy. Okay. So now this is going to auto load for us. So you just set the mat against the little rollers and it will auto load. Now what it's doing is it's just making sure that the mat is all aligned. And um, I did set it to the premium vinyl setting. So I'm going to double check that this is going to work. It's at default pressure. Um, and now what we do, everything is buttonless on the Joy, remember. So we're not clicking anything. There's no buttons. But on your design space, you can just click go and everything will get started cutting. And while that's doing that, this little guy is still drying. I put my phone on there because I needed to use my keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, he looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out. So what I did was having the wood size face up, I just went around and traced with my scissors and cut it out and it did a really, really nice job. So I'll get this all ready to go. I liked using a variety of um, different pattern papers, but make sure that you guys just take the technique and tips um, from this tutorial and really personalize this project for yourself. Um, so the fun thing about this is you can use any type of paper that you'd like and really create any type of sign for any season, um, minus the Easter egg shape. But um, Okay, so that's how that turned out. Looks really good. Make sure I don't have any other pieces that just need to come off. So what I did now was I used my true control knife. Hold on, let's go ahead and unload this. It says it's complete. So then you just hit the unload button on your computer and it unloads it for you. So, oh, this look really cute. You know what? I didn't get quite enough um, vinyl on this side. I must have measured my um, thing wrong. So don't worry, I'll recut that behind the scenes. It cut off the H a little bit. So instead of, um, I'll show you guys when I weed it. Instead of recutting the whole thing, what I'll do is I'll just go through and recut the H so I can use all the other letters. Okay, so now we are going to use the um, iron-on. So when you're using iron-on, you're going to have to use the shiny side down. And it's a little hard to tell on white, but in person, you guys will know. One side is a little bit more dull. The other side is shiny. So you're going to put the shiny side down. And let me make sure that I measured this correctly, too. Did I... I have to squeeze these letters in a little bit. Let me recut a piece of vinyl. I must be just a little sleepy this morning because I think this one is a little tad shy as well. So let me recut these and we will put them all back on the um, mat. Okay, so now I have a piece of HTV that is big enough. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes early morning crafting can make my measurements go a little off, but okay. So now what we'll do is we will get this all loaded and I am going to go back in and I'm just gonna reset my materials. So I'm gonna browse my materials and get the iron-on. Again, I'm gonna use the Everyday, Everyday Iron-on selection for this. Um, I think it's the closest for this Caesar Easy Weed in my opinion. And I'm gonna make sure that my mirror is turned on. It is, and I'm using default pressure. And it reminds me to make sure that it's shiny face down. And because I want to double check, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so that is. And I'm gonna load that against the wheels and it just auto loads, which is really fun. So now it's just making sure that my mat is aligned again. And now we can go ahead and hit go and it will get cutting. So while that is cutting, I am going to go ahead and just pierce the little hole so that we can um, put um, string through this. So what I did is I um, had the egg facing down and I just went in and just kind of poked a hole. That way I would know when I flipped it over where to go. And then you can just kind of cut um, with your true control knife around the little opening and create that little hole. So this is a really easy way to do it. I thought it was going to be much harder than this, but it was a really effective little way to do it. Okay, and then we'll just take that little piece of paper out, and we have our little bowl. It's a little bit of piece in there still. Should I get it out? And there's going to be, um, you know, string going through this or ribbon going through this. So don't worry about it being super perfect, but um, get it as best you can so that you can fit 
you know, your material through it. Okay, so that was perfect. So what I'm gonna do, again, I'm so used to having to hit a button over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna go over to my design space and just hit unload and we will get this all ready. Okay, so I am going to preheat my Easy Press Mini. I'm gonna go back to my heat guide up here and it says that I want it to be on low. So I'm just going to turn it on and then once I turn it on, it's already on the low setting. So we're gonna get that all ready to go. So it's just gonna start preheating while I get everything weeded. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to remove the material from the mat. And I will use my weeding tool just to start weeding. That looks really nice. I think the letters are gonna be a perfect size for this. And I really like this font. Okay, so the Everyday Iron-On um, selection at default pressure worked flawlessly. It's a really great cut. And I'm just going to go ahead and take all of the surrounding area off first. That's just kind of how my um, thought process works when weeding. Kind of just simplifies everything so that we're ready to do the middles. This text is really fun. I like it and it's so just different. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through and weed out the middle of the letters. We have the R and the A. So now you guys can see, okay, the easy press is ready. Now you guys can see just how easy it was um, and how when you um, mirror the design, so this is how it came out. That's why we wanna mirror it so it cuts everything upside down. Um, and then when you turn it over, now it's gonna be applied this way. And um, so this is the built-in carrier sheet. Um, so you don't you need any other materials um, when using iron-on, which is great. You don't have to use like any type of transfer material or anything like that, it's all built in. So that's why you mirror it. So then when you flip it around this way, then all of your letters are facing the right direction. And if you don't mirror it, oops, you've wasted a lot of material. So just remind yourself, you'll get in the habit though as you get um, more crafty and crafty. It's something that just comes second nature once you get going with it. Okay, so now this was why it was really important to give some space in between because we're gonna cut out these letters individually and place them on each of the felt um, pieces for the banner and then we'll get to um, ironing them on. Okay, so I loaded my mat with just a little tiny piece to redo that H that got cut off. So I'm just gonna repeat that process while I weed um, the little vinyl part out. So I'm going to just start at the corner. Let's hit go on this little guy. And you guys will see my little accident here. Okay. Weeding out my middles. Okay, so bummer that little H got cut off, but that is just fine. Um, again, instead of recutting the whole thing, what I did was I went back into Design Space and I just hit um, the hide button in the design in the um, layers panel. I used the hide button to hide all of the things but the H, that way the H just cut out by itself and I didn't have to waste more vinyl recutting everything out. So here we go, the H is all fine. We have saved the project. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I went ahead and um, just took these individual pieces off um, from the other pieces because we weren't gonna need all 18, I believe there were, um, pieces. So I just took off the ones that I needed and then the others can be saved for another craft. Um, I was originally thinking about placing these down as a sticker, but I think they're gonna be a little too intricate. So what I'll do, is I'll grab my um, transfer tape and I would recommend using this transfer tape for this project because we're going to be applying it down on paper. So if you use something that's strong grip, um, you are going to actually rip off your um, paper once you come to rip it up. You guys will see what I mean when I get started here, but um, I would recommend doing it that way. Um, using a lighter grip transfer tape. That way you guys don't ruin that pretty paper that you just laid down. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut off a little piece here and we will get to putting all of our letters down. So before anything else, I would recommend um, getting everything placed where you want it. So I think I'm going to have, let's see here. 
put everything like this. Okay, perfect. Get everything a little organized here. Okay, so now we can just get started using our scraper tool. And we'll just, um, the, one of the great things about this transfer tape is that you can reuse it. So I'm just going to see if I can do it this way. See if I can do multiple transfers with one piece of tape here. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the H down and then lightly press with my fingers to get it all down, do a scrape to make sure it's all down, and then this is where you are going to want to make sure your transfer tape is light grip. Um, I would recommend this masking transfer tape because it really works good with paper um, because harsh or really strong grip transfer tape at this point when you go to peel is just going to rip off your paper. That would be very sad. Okay, so there's our H. Cute. Okay, and then we'll just continue down the line. So we'll grab our little A. Okay, and we are done. Okay, so the, the A part, or the happy part, is all finished. So now what we're going to do is we are going to start on the Easter part. Um, and what I'm going to do is I am going to actually put um, my mat aside because I just want to use my heat mat. And um, sometimes this little guy just gets a little too warm, so I want to make sure that I'm just using my tabletop as a base here. So now I'm just going to bring in my Easy Press mat. And the mini has already preheated. Make sure my cord is all ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get everything cut out so that we can just start applying it. So this was why at this step right here, um, why it was really important to have just a little bit of space between those letters so that you have some room to get them all um, cut out and give yourself a little bit of um, transfer tape or, or yes, carrier sheet, I apologize, um, around your letters as well. Okay, so easy peasy, those are all cut out. And then, what one thing that I really like about HTV is that um, it has that sticky backing. So you, unlike vinyl, you can't lay it down with a transfer tape and then pull it back up because it just, everything sticks. But you can just lay this down and, you know, get it all arranged. Um, and then you can you know, kind of rearrange it and pull it back up. So what that's one thing that I really, really like about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start placing all of the letters where I want them. Um, and then we will get to pressing. Here we go. Okay, so they're all placed, and now we'll just go one by one and get them all ready to go. So now, using my heat guide um, on Cricut.com, I'm just going to preheat the um, material. It said preheat for five seconds, I believe. Let me double check. So preheat the felt for five seconds. Okay, and then I'm just going to lay back my little E and then we will use constant pressure it says let me double check the top okay constant pressure light movement for 30 seconds and again it's on the low it's all preheated because it's green so we're ready to go so I'm going to start counting I'm going to place my iron fully on top of that letter that way I only have to do one press Okay, that's just about 30 seconds. So it does say warm peel, so I'm just gonna let it kind of cool down a little bit. Looks really cute so far. I love the pop of color on that. Um, this is kind of almost a salmon um, color. It's just really nice. The white really pairs well with it. So it does say warm peel. Be careful, because these little carrier sheets can get rather warm, so um, you just wanna make sure you don't burn yourself. And then you'll just go ahead and peel up.
and it looks great. If for some reason it doesn't lay down and you need to repress, make sure you keep this little carrier sheet and then you are just gonna replace it over your letter and then you can reapply your heat. But you want to make sure that this carrier sheet goes back down over your um, HTV to protect it. Okay, so the first one is done and then we will just move on to the next. So again, just to remind you, I'll do one more and then I'll speed it up for you. Um, but preheating for five seconds. I love the little mini. When it first came out, I didn't re didn't really think. I, well, when it first came out, I think I had just gotten my big easy press, and I really wanted that. Um, so I didn't. I was, you know, kind of had my heart set on this, and I kind of ignored the mini. And then my husband um, kind of heard me continue to talk about the mini after my big one. I love my big one, but just for other little projects like this, again, thirty seconds, constant movement and light pressure. Um, my husband kind of kept hearing me talk about the mini and just, oh, that would be neat for that um, or this or that. And so he got it for me for Valentine's Day. And let me tell you, it's actually a really nice little tool. I like it a lot. So um, it just allows you to do other little projects such as this. So it's super fun to use. I really like it. Okay. Did I lose count? This is what happens when you chat and craft. Okay. So... Yeah, I'm just going to let that cool for just a second, and then we will get it all peeled up. Looks really nice. All right, effortless. Okay, so I'm going to continue working on the other ones, and we will um, get this all put together. Okay, so the last one is all done. Everything looks really, really fun. So for stringing them together, you can, if you remember, this one came in the pack with this big, long pink string, so you can go ahead and reuse that. If you'll remember, for the ornaments, um, they were um, advertised as ornaments, and I instead used them as a banner. So they only had little, tiny individual strings that went with them, and they didn't have like a long, continuous string. So what I think I'm gonna do is I will just use a piece of ribbon to string those eggs together. This is from the Ribbon Boutique. It is. Is, um, like a nice pale pink gingham color so I think that'll be really really nice and pretty I really like to kind of mix and match um, fabrics and patterns because I think it's um, just really really fun and kind of just brings something different to the project so go ahead and string them however you would like I think these turned out really really fun so I hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys had fun and enjoyed this um, and had fun looking at the joy make sure you give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment I would love to hear from you I think it's really really fun that all of this came from two really small devices um, the joy is a really fun way to use some scrap materials as well as make small little projects like this it was perfect and again just ungroup um, those letters if you want to use your smaller um, light grip mat that comes with the joy um, and if not if you have that large 12 um, inch mat then go ahead and just print these all together and that would be just just fine. All right, guys, I have a lot of Easter things coming up, so be sure you guys are all subscribed and ready to go. I'd love to have you joining along with the next um, few crafts that we're going to be doing. A lot of fun things are coming to the table, so be sure you are subscribed by hitting the sus subscribe button below. And also, all the materials that I use in this video will be linked below, so make sure you use that if you want to create the same look at your craft table. All right, thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.